Hey, everyone. Welcome back to The Great Retention with Camber Parker, sponsored by The Yo Prono. I'm Camber, your young professional expert and founder of The Yo Prono, where we bring you the answers you need to know about how to attract and retain the best talent, starting with the young professionals you work with. There's a lot of young professional fish in the sea, as I like to say, but how do you catch them? And what do you do once you reel them in? That's where we come in. Today, I am thrilled to have Trisha Hamilton join us, president of Inside Out Coaching and Consulting, joining us from Baltimore, Maryland. Trisha's work stems from her decades-long experience helping communication, motivation, and hiring and developing talent, among many other things that we're going to talk about today. In her work, she brings both proven strategies and tools to get the measurable, measurable results her clients want. After meeting last year through a connection with my brother, Trisha and I have kept in touch and she is a champion of what we're doing here at the Yo Prono. I invited her on the show because of her exposure to both business leaders and young professional leaders. Today, we're going to unpack why communication is tough between the two and what she recommends to executives and leaders when building out their development and retention of young talent. Trisha, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Cameron. I'm super excited to be here. I'm so excited. And and really, you've just been, just a side note, you've been such a wonderful mentor and friend to me. I've been really lucky that we connected and you've just poured a lot into me. So I'm very excited for others to get to experience you and, and who you are. So before we get started, we're going to start with a lightning round, as I like to call it. So just quick few sentences or less. Uh, we'll answer a few questions and then we'll really get into the meat of our discussion. So first up, what is something that is not on your resume? Ooh, well, I'm going to call it a bio because my resume at this point doesn't exist. But um, <laughs> so I'll say professionally, I think um, I would say where I am today took a really winding path. It was quite the journey. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, it definitely was not linear or straight in any way. Uh, and it's just been a gift. Uh, I would say, personally, what do we not see? I would say, uh, ooh, I'm a huge music nut. Mm. Go to uh, obscene number of concerts and festivals a year. Cool. And in my spare time, I uh, rescue senior dogs. Oh, I didn't know that. That's so special. I think that's really cool. There's, I feel like every time I talk to you, I learn something new about you. So that's really amazing. Can you share a memorable experience you've had working with a young professional or a group of young professionals in the past? Well, I work with tons of young professionals across all generations. Um, you know, every year we go on a ski trip. Uh -huh. And the age range is 62 uh -huh. at this point, down to about 24. Mm. And what I think is so fun in that is these are clients, people I've worked with, and just watching the dynamic mm -hmm. between the different um, ages and how everybody incorporates together on yeah. this trip is just, that's always memorable. Yeah, I, I would imagine. What is your favorite modern workplace tool? So you and I have talked about this before, and I always laugh because I'm thinking, well, I don't even know if these are <laughs> modern. So uh, obviously Slack. I mean, I think everybody uses Slack at this point. I do a lot now with AI, specifically mm. chat and T, because what I'll do is I'll create content, mm -hmm. and then I'll use that to help me create the agenda. Mm -hmm. Timing. Um, uh, a lot of communities of practice that I'm in, uh, in apps, mm -hmm. Um organizations that I'm with. And I'd say lastly, this probably isn't modern, but I use uh, like a notability and then everything gets stored in my OneDrive and oh, yeah. it's just really clean for my clients. Great. Well, it sounds like you have a lot of good modern workplace tools that you like to use. So, and we actually just conveniently, we had a, um, an AI expert come in and talk to us for the the show. So that was who I was just talking to. And he has such interesting, uh, interesting perspectives. And so I'm glad, I mean, everybody needs to be learning how to use it safely and, and, you know, try to Absolutely. maximize your time. So Great. I'm glad you mentioned all of those things. So we're going to dive into the really the meat of our discussion today, which is we are talking about young professionals, of course. So those who make up that 21 to 39 range that are going to be making up two thirds of the workforce by 2030 as they age up. Help us set the stage by talking about this from the work that you do every day with clients. What type of impact will this shift in the workforce have on our businesses, our economy and our communities? It's a loaded question. I know. 
Well, it's a great question. Uh, it's already started to happen, obviously, right? The shift has started to happen. Mm-hmm. It's going to continue to happen. Um, you know, as boomers uh, uh, and Xers retire and um, like you just said, by 2030, right? Um, I think about um, double bottom line, right? That's, you know, just marrying social responsibility with financial gain. Um, I don't think we saw that a few generations ago. Mm-hmm. Um, young professionals demand that. And, and, it, and it's, it's a driving force. I have a couple of clients who won't even consider an organization that doesn't have a double bottom line. So I, right. I feel about that. I think, I think the gig economy mm-hmm. um, and the impact of what does a career look like? Does it have to be with one organization, right? How do I, how do I marry a whole bunch of uh, pieces together? And then I, I like the word fluidity, mm. um, how we work, when we work, where we work. Um, and I mean, COVID just highlighted that, but I think it was coming anyways. Mm-hmm. It just, COVID kind of gave young professionals some permission. Yeah. Um, That's a really so love, good way to describe that. Yeah. COVID gave them permission. I feel like I have not heard that, but it's so true. It, it, I mean, COVID impacted a lot, but you're right. It impacted those, those young professionals significantly, especially the ones that were coming into the workforce for the very first time. I do think uh, double bottom line, you're going to just see so much more of that. Yeah. And it's going to trickle into core values. Mm. Uh, it's just... Don't get me started on core values. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I was going to say that may be a good segue into, you know, the work that you do. So talk about the work you you do every day. Um, and how are you supporting your clients that are maybe feeling the impacts of this surge of young professional talent and the rise of, of just the sheer number of them, um, especially if they have an aging workforce, which the reality is a lot of people do have these aging workforces now. So how, how do you work with them? I don't think I've feel that on a wide scale. Mm-hmm. Um, like, yeah, I don't, I don't experience that on a wide scale, yeah. but I would say that regardless of my, my client's age, um, generation, the work I do is around communication, mindset. How do we show up in the world? Um, perspective, um, head trash. Uh, and so across the spectrum, of my clients, I'm always talking with them about, tell me about that person. Tell mm-hmm. me, you know, how do you relate to them? or to your team? If, cause I work with a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, C-suite mm-hmm. leaders. My conversation is, well, tell me about that person. Mm-hmm. How did you, how was he or she motivated? Right. And really, I mean, that's the space I work in. And, um, I think pushing through roadblocks is one of the key things, even if you're highly successful Mm -hmm. and communication roadblocks are probably one of the biggest challenges my clients face. Yeah. And I want to talk about that because my next question is, is all about the communication that you have seen between the generations. Mm -hmm. And, and again, we can look at it because of the topic today, of course, we're talking about this, this young professional generation. So I would love to see if, or here, if you see specific challenges between the generations and if you do, what does your work with them look like? Um, and just really kind of want to get a, a feel for what you're seeing out there with the CEOs, the C-suite, the executives that you work with. So a, a funny, funny story as at uh, dinner at our friend's house last night uh-huh. and, and my, my, my good friend, he's, he's a major um, CEO of a hospital. Uh-huh. And uh, his daughter was also there, who I've known since she was before she was born. Mm-hmm. And when I said, "Hey guys," I we said to my husband, "I need to get going. I need to I need to get home. Got to get a good night's sleep." Yeah. And my friend's daughter said, well, what, "What's going on?" And I said, "I'm going to do a podcast." Just tell me about it. So I started to tell her about it, and my friend, who's definitely a, a, a boomer, <laughs> said, uh, "Oh, God. right." Um, so. It, for me, it comes down to communication and perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you have to be willing. I shouldn't say you have to, but the more people are willing to understand someone's um, communication style, 
and preference, mm-hmm. um, the more people are going to actually be able to receive it. Yeah. So I think about, I think about understand how the other person needs to receive information mm. and then communicate with them there. And the also say this, we have to check our assumptions at the door. Yep. I think that generational stereotyping can be hurtful. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it is hurtful. It is, yeah. Um, and I'll say lastly, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but lastly, yeah. I'll say the art of listening is mastered by few. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to truly listen, not to respond, but to listen to try and understand perspective yeah, would serve us all. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like how you, you talked about, you really you can't, it's hurtful to, to make assumptions about a generation before getting to know them. And, yeah. and it's, you know, I'll, I'll loop back in. So when we saw each other last week, right, I came in and did a workshop on uh, intergenerational communication. And there's a lot of hurt, hurtful myths out there that, you do bring to conversations. And so I'm glad that you you kind of tied back in just the concept of you need to to understand when you're having these conversations with people, it, you need to put that at the door, right? Like you can't bring that in because it's going to hurt your communication overall and that's going to have lasting impacts. It could start to build, build on itself, right? Yes, and a perfect summary Amber, and I would say awareness of our biases mm-hmm. um, allows us to make a different choice. Yeah. Beautifully said. Thank you. I think that was perfect. You definitely, you did more than just answer my question, which is what we look for. So uh, in your previous work that you've done with just several Northwestern Mutual offices, which is how we originally got connected, which is where my brother works, um, your strengths were identifying and developing emerging leaders as well as team dynamics and alignment. Can you tell us more about this and what other leaders can learn from your experience there? Yeah. Um, gosh, it always comes back to almost the same thing for me, which is if I'm working with a team of emerging leaders or or maybe I'm working with a, uh, a producing team, a large producing team, um, or, or a very seasoned leadership team, it comes down to the same thing for me, which is you have to get to the why behind the why to understand someone's beliefs, um, their their mindset, what's important to them. And that, in, in any leadership space, having a development plan, and I use that term loosely because mm-hmm. I don't like the, I just I can't, can't think of a better term right now, but saying, okay, Camber, here's your gifts and abilities. Mm-hmm. Here's where you want to go. Here's the gap. Let's create the plan to get you there. And the more you can do that and bring a whole leadership team into that space, the more they help pull each other up. Um, and, but again, for me, it comes down to like fulfill them, create synergies, understand what makes somebody tick. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. Then you get alignment, you get culture, mm-hmm. you get, uh, and you get caring. And this takes time, right? All the things you're talking about takes time. So from your experience working with, you know, both Northwestern Mutual and beyond, because I know you have a lot of other clients outside of that, what does that That's time true. typically look like? I'm sure it's very different for all organizations, but in your experience, what does that look like? So some, uh, some um, teams, organizations, teams will bring me in they'll say, listen, I need you to do this scope of work for six months Mm -hmm. or it's a year or um, with some of my larger Northwestern teams, it's just evolving Mm -hmm. where they'll just have me continue to pull new leaders into the space. Um, So it it, it does vary. Yeah, very. Is that that what you were asking, really the scope of work? Uh, Well, scope of work, I'm also interested in, you know, how this type of work plays out with different companies. Is it, you know, do they start to see change right away? Do they start to see change six, 12 months in? Because I'm sure it it changes. You know, 
the the biggest thing I see with organizations is it when they're willing to do the work, the insight of they want to do the work is 20%. The mm. work is that 80% of habit change. Uh, and when we want to create change, transformational change, uh, it, it, there's no time on it, but it is a ongoing commitment every day. Yeah. And I, I think just to tie all this back in, you know, the name of your your company, right, is Inside Out Coaching and Consulting. I think that's that's really interesting, right? Because you're talking about you've got to understand the whys, the, the core values before you can really see the change. And everybody on the leadership team has to be uh, has to be in alignment there. So is that is that kind of the direction that that you or at least am I spot on with the, the idea of the name there? Or do you want to elaborate on that anymore? Totally. It is literally that. It's <laughs> if we want to have outward change, we need to have inward growth, mm -hmm. learning edge, change, mm -hmm. transformation. Yeah. yeah. Very Spot cool. On. Well, in that same vein, just because a lot of the listeners, viewers of this show are business owners or leaders, those C-suite executives, they're looking typically for proactive ways to better uh, increase their attracting and retention of young professional mm -hmm. talent and, you know, finding the best talent, which is hard right now. So how do they do that when there are so many new jobs and roles out there like influencers? There's a lot of contract work. There's freelancers mm -hmm. now. What what do they what do they do to try to to hire and retain? I have to ask. I like to ask every guest because they all have different takes on it because of their their backgrounds and their expertise. So what are your thoughts there? Authenticity. Um, be authentic. Um, I, I also do think it depends on the industry. Um, uh, but care, regardless of ind industry, care deeply enough um, to dig deep to find out what people want. I said core values earlier. I think about, um, I'll see core values on people's websites. Mm -hmm. And then is, is, that, is that how um, someone walking into your organization feels? Is that, is that really the message they're getting? Mm -hmm. So as you're looking to attract this whole wave of talent coming into the workforce, which is already here, mm -hmm. um, be the organization that respects each generation's needs, wants, desires. Mm -hmm. right? I think, again, that the word we used before, fluidity. Yep. Um, think about ways to... Uh, if, you've, if you've got the right person, I always think about who first, if they're a who, if they should be on your bus, thinking of John Gordon, right? If they should be on your bus, figure out how to work with them. Mm -hmm. I also think be careful, um, be careful of what's being said about your organization out there uh, in social media, yeah. right? Um, and, and walk your talk. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What is on the ex, you know, outside for people to see has to be, has to match internal. So again, kind of with that inside out concept, a little bit different there, but it's it's the same kind of principle. Um, so I I agree. So many really great points there. One thing I want to mention because I know you have kids who are young professionals, correct? Yes. I always yeah. I always say it's like those are your best. Re that's your best research, right? Because you can really wow. kind of just start to see. And I think I think it helps you if you have the right approach and you have the right perspective. It can help you when you're working with them in your professional life as well as how I look at it. Would you agree with that? Hands down. I mean, I, I think I was telling you last week even that I will, you know, I'll have to check myself sometimes. So I'll text or I'll call one of my daughters and just say, should I say this or should I say that, yeah. you know, and they'll laugh and they'll respond, but it, you need, you need to get that outside perspective. So if I'm looking to attract and retain, um, my daughter's demographic, um, I'm going to do my research, mm -hmm. uh, and, um, yeah, I'm going to do my research and I'm going to meet, hopefully attract those people based on what they're seeking. But again, I think it requires research and thoughtfulness and, being authentic. Mm -hmm. I think authenticity is really the key here because that is what 
from our research, that's what young professionals are are looking for. They want to buy from and work for companies that are authentic in nature. So an authentic brand, also an authentic culture, which is, it's a tall order for companies. It's hard to do. Um, And so that's where, again, having that kind of inside out work, making sure you really work on yourself before you can, and your leadership team, and, and then that can trickle out to your team members. That's really impactful. So just a couple more questions today, Trisha, to to really finalize this this really great topic that we're covering. As the growing number of young professionals continue entering the workforce, as we've continued to talk about, and as these experienced professionals begin to exit, there are already many of them are already exiting. Where do you see the biggest challenge? Is it uh, is it one thing that we've talked about today? Is it everything? You know, where where is that really big challenge that you anticipate? I'll bring it back to perspective. Um, and I um, yeah, I was doing a training in somatic work mm-hmm. and, 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 and the trainer showed us a video of two people dancing mm. um, in, a, in an old fashioned sort of slow dance. Mm-hmm. And the point of it was perspective. If, if I'm dancing with you, Camber, I can see what's behind you and you can see what's behind me. Mm -hmm. And so what I need to understand is what are you seeing? Mm -hmm. And you need to understand what am I seeing? Yeah. And um, understanding another person's perspective is critical. And I, I think generationally, I think about coming of age, right? So, and that is perspective. So what, what were the factors for that person when they were coming of age, right? Their political divide, uh, polarizing political divide. Was there was there war? Was there tech, massive technology changes? So there's that piece, and that's just one important factor. Yeah, I think about geography. I have clients from coast to coast, mm-hmm. and the conversations I have with my Midwest clients are very different than the clients mm-hmm. I have, conversations I have with. Clients. Yeah. So geography, uh, religious beliefs, mm-hmm. cultural norms, um, you know, family impact on us, mm-hmm. loss. Um, so the reason I wanted to mention that is those are in addition to generational challenges. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're as important and they are, it's all, you're one person. Right. Right. And I think one thing that I I sometimes will leave out in conversations because we are so focused on sharing with our audience, you know, the tools that you can really focus on for mm-hmm. for hiring and attracting talent. That sometimes we forget just about this human piece, this human approach that's often left out of these conversations, and it really it shouldn't be right because at the end of the day, we we still need to just treat other humans as humans, and that goes a long way. Mm-hmm. And I add one other thing around um, if you're an aging leadership team, mm-hmm. if you're a, um, um, if you're not multi generational in your leadership team and mm-hmm. the makeup of it, you need to change that quick. Yep. Because that's going to impact you as this workforce shifts. Yep. You need that perspective. Yeah. And you said earlier, it's hard. It's hard for organizations. And part of me goes, eh, I don't, I don't agree. There's always a chance. I mean, I, not that I disagree with you. I'm saying yeah. is rise up, stand up, yeah. do the work. You got to do it. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a really that. great message and a great way to to wrap up today's episode. But Trisha, anything else you want to share that we didn't cover that you think is important? Keep doing your work, Camber. It was uh, a pleasure to put you in front of a big leadership group last week and um, really impactful for that group. Thank you. Um, So keep bringing bringing your work out into the world. Well, I really appreciate that. And thanks again for all the support. We'll uh, we'll make sure that people can find you in our comments and our, our links when we post your episodes. So thanks again, Tricia. Thank you. You take care.
Thanks again for joining us today on The Great Retention with Camber Parker. Before you go, remember this. Young professionals make up nearly half of the workforce today and are expected to jump at a rapid pace in this decade. What will you do to help them become the great leaders we need for our future? Join us next time for more information on how to recruit and retain young professional talent. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. This helps others who are interested in this topic find our episodes. So thanks for doing that. And don't forget to share with your coworkers. Until next time, we'll see you soon.